I did have a starting issue on this. So let me go through all those videos of how I analyzed uh, that. What was the starting trouble and uh, how do I, you know, come out of that? Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explain how a car's starter motor works. The starter motor is started from the ignition switch or the key. The electrical circuit is split into two parts. The main live feed, which runs directly from the battery positive to the starter motor and is earthed by the housing. These use large cables, which are capable of carrying up to 400 amps. The other half is the ignition switch. This utilizes smaller wires and is known as the low current circuit. The solenoid is just like a relay. It uses a low current circuit to, sw to switch on a high current circuit. From the ignition switch, the driver starts the process of engaging the starter motor, which in turn rotates the engine, enabling the engine to start. So we did see now how the starter motor works. So we need to understand starting of a vehicle, how exactly it happens. And uh, we need to do some analysis if the vehicle is not starting. So let's start first from understanding the concept of how we start a Engine and uh, let's try to see some animation there. Retest it, enabling the engine to start. Current flows from the battery via the ignition switch and onboard computer to the start. So, what do you see here on the left side is a flywheel. The flywheel is part of your engine. And uh, you must have seen in olden days that the car stopped, they would use a big handle and, uh, you know, crank the engine manually. Let's see some video on that so that you will start understanding concepts more. Now let's see how the engine is cracked manually. We are showing that you understand this. You are doing this manually. This work. Whatever you are doing manually, you are cracking to start the engine. Right? So this motion, you see the aerodynamic motion. Right? So the motion can be done by a motor. So I would see this as uh, automation of automating the start of the vehicle. So how do you do automating of the start of the vehicle? That is where uh, the previous video was explaining that if you are able to rotate the flywheel through a motor, then you will be able to start the motor. Then that is why you need the starter motor. So let's go to the previous video, watch what we are watching on the starter motor. Back here. It's a magnetic field. Inside a magnetic coil is pulled into the magnetic field. The coil movement sets a lever mechanism in motion. The engaging lever presses the starter pinion in towards the flywheel ring gear. 
This is the toothed area around the outside of the flywheel. To prevent the pinion gear teeth from pressing onto and damaging the ring gear teeth, the pinion is driven by a thrust screw motion, meaning it turns as it's engaged. The teeth screw into the ring gear teeth gaps, and this allows for smooth and precise engagement. This common type of starter motor is known as a pre-engaged thrust screw drive starter. When the ring gear and pinion completely mesh, the starter has engaged. At this point, the magnetic coil in the solenoid reaches its final position. It pushes against the contact plate which closes the circuit between the battery and the starter motor. The current now flows from the battery to the starter motor via a large cable or wire at the starter motor. It is earthed, as I said before, via the housing of the starter motor. The current causes the motor to spin. The spinning motion is transferred to the pinion. The pinion turns the flywheel which in turn drives the crankshaft and the engine rotates and starts. This all happens within a few seconds. When the engine is started it will now rotate a lot faster than the starter motor pinion. This high engine speed could over rev the starter motor and cause damage. To prevent this from happening the pinion is disengaged by a free wheel. driver releases the starter button. Yes, now this is explaining the concept of how your engine is starting. And the pinion disengages because of freewheeling, right? There's no sensor involved there. Now, what is the, after seeing this, we should be able to understand a relay diagram. And then uh, what we can understand is that if you are, starter motor is not becoming on then there is an issue due to which your vehicle is not starting so let's try to see if we can catch hold the relay diagram of my jeep cherokee 4.7 liter v8 cylinder so i'm going to make you go through the relay diagram just to understand the electrical circuit diagram of what happens uh, when you press the start engine where the electrical connection goes and how do we troubleshoot that on this fuse the fuses hold on guys i've got a 2000 so now let's see uh, the fuse diagram let's look at where the relay is and uh, how the computer gives signal for the relay to start the, to give power to the starter motor when you cue the ignition switch on. So let's, let, let us see how it's explained. Six Jeep Grand Cherokee. And this thing has a total of three fuse boxes. There's two here under the hood and there's one more inside the car. On this fuse box, both the fuses and the relays are labeled, but on the other two fuse boxes, none of the fuses are labeled. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over in detail uh, what each fuse does. So starting with this fuse under the hood, we're looking at fuse eight, eight, nine, and 10. So fuse eight is for the left parking lamps. Fuse nine is for the trailer tow parking lamps. Fuse 10 is for the right parking lamps. Now moving on to fuses 12 through 21. 12 is the front control module battery number four. That is front control module battery number two. This is for the adjustable pedal. This is for the front are gonna be. So we saw a quick fuse diagram and uh, for the troubleshooting, I tried, you know, uh, exchanging a release. That's what, you know, a lot of videos do. Let me play a video where they exchange the relay diagram to troubleshoot. So this in uh, ground, I switch it to power, and now I can so do I was check in here. So pretty good. I didn't want to. Um, I put that test light on the starter, which I know is. Uh, so I didn't want to touch the starter motor first, so I started analyzing. Uh, 
was the electronic electrical problem. I am a software engineer, and then I would like to do more troubleshooting electronic electrical before you know touching the mechanical. So this video explains a little about where to start from if you have the issues in starting. Are you sure? Okay. So let's see this video now. If you explain it quickly. It's now working good. So looking at the relay, um, looking, it's the second fuse box next to the battery. You're gonna have, well, the cover actually says, it's the second one, there's an empty space on a relay here, and then the second one next to that empty spot is the relay for the starter. So I'm using uh, these uh, relay testers from Lyle. And uh, that is the 606660 or 660. That is a very good one because then I can keep the relay in there and do some tests because then and now it gives me some terminal to test. So I also, just for myself, I mark the pins that I need because you know, in here it says three, four, like three, five, and four, and on the other side, one and two. And but well, what is it doesn't tell you what is one, two, and here. And if you go over to the oh, original wire well, diagrams, it shows 85. It's going to bypass the, uh, the relay and try to power your starter motor directly. And uh, that's what I also tried to do. But let's try to understand the relay diagram first. So we are going to have at the relay diagram for the starter motor understand uh, where to cue the electrical connections for the uh, starter motor relay so that we can test if i give power to the relay whether the motor will start or not start so if i am able to give successfully the power to the starter motor through the relay, and if I hear that the motor is rotating, then there is no issue with the starter motor. But in spite of giving power from the relay to the starter motor, if the starter motor is not starting, then there is an issue with the starter motor. And that is what I did. I just followed this video and another video, which I play now, then uh, you can see how to troubleshoot that. The starter, that's the command pressed by uh, this video. It was done by Sam Owens. He explains very beautifully. Thanks, Sam Owens, on how to troubleshoot uh, if there is an issue with your electrical circuit relay or motor. You know, let's watch this video. Uh, I'll run this video for a very short time so that we can see both. Starter solenoid contact. The other side is coming from one of these battery supply places over here to there. I'm eliminating that and I'm going to take uh, this lead and I'm going to put it on the battery terminal. It's going to go through a 15 amp fuse, very important, and then the red side now my Jeep was a 4.7 LV8. You can see this, and this is 5.7 LV8. But the troubleshooting process is almost the same. There's no difference. Let's hear what he says. Uh, before that, I want to see if I'm getting. External sound. So I'll stop sharing once and share once again. Yes, I have it. I'm going to share and then start this. Is going to be connected to the alligator clip, which is connected to the other side of my push button switch on my dash. So when I push the push button, it's going to send this battery through that fuse, through this lead, through the switch, and down to the starter solenoid. So 
if I have a problem, then I know that this contact is my source of problem. And Here is the wiring diagram for the start circuit for the 05 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It shows the pen layout for the start relay and also uh, a test setup to uh, manually operate. Yeah, to make a simple, uh, I would explain this way is that you see this uh, relay diagram, right? You see the connection 27, 29, and then you see the wire switch. So this is a solenoid here. And what happens is that uh, when you uh, press your ignition key, which uh, you see in this diagram here, this is the relay diagram, and this is the relay. And what exactly happens is, uh, if you are connecting, you are grounding your, uh, sorry, you are taking a wire and just connecting from 27 to 29. Just take a wire, connect from 27 to 29, which exactly what the relay does. And you should hear the rotation sound of the motor. If you are not hearing the sound of the motor, at the most what you can do, do is check this relay. That means swap the relay with another good relay like you know you can swap the horn relay and see if the motor starts. So if horn relay is good, right? And you press the horn, you can see the horn. You can locate the horn relay inside this fuse box and just put that relay here. And if it is the same issue, then there is no issue with the relay. You also can check the fuse, which is Sam Owens is explaining about the fuses. And then you can swap the fuses or you can take out the fuses and take your multimeter and test simply if there is a connectivity there. That means uh, what you are going to do is that. I'm just going to put the, uh, so you know you can take a multimeter and measure the resistance of a conductor or you can see the voltage of a battery. So let's see what Sam Owens is explaining now. A little because he gave me the start of how to, you know, do the diagnosis. That the starter solenoid. So read that, check it out, hook it up, and see if you can isolate your problem. Good luck. This shows the uh, starter relay connector and the pen locations and the colors of the wires that go to each pen. So you might be able to find the wires uh, underneath the relay uh, socket and uh, work with some testing there. Okay. Good luck. That's what we're testing right now, this contact. All right, so let's see what we got. I'm going to plug this up to my positive. Then I touch it. And right there, I've got positive. Okay, so I've got positive on that lead and it's protected. And I'm going to push the button and we're going to listen for the sound. If I hear the sound of the engine cranking, now it's not. So now uh, what uh, Sam Owens is doing is that he has a relay which he can press manually. That means he has opened this relay and if he touches or pushes that relay, then the relay will close. So when the relay will close, he should hear the sound of the motor. That's what he's explaining. Not going to crank because I'm not going to even have the switch or the key in the switch. So you watch this. This is a test of that connection. So you see that now. 
when he is trying to he has done a short circuit for the relay here. Uh, that is 27 and 29, what I showed in the diagram. They are shorted that and he's trying to make the ignition key switch on. You do not hear any sound of the motor. In his case, at least you can hear some sound. In my case, there was no sound. So, you know, I concluded that there is an issue with the starter motor. So let's see further, you know, I actually went inside and uh, tried to remove the starter motor. Let's take from there and then, you know, well, I'll show you how we did the analysis. This is the first tab, since I need that the vehicle uh, first tab. Uh, you have to uh, put your vehicle on a ramp. So that's what I'm explaining here, that how to put vehicle on ramp. So imagine one most important thing I'm advising for people who do not have any background right in the uh, mechanical side who have always worked on software or electronic subject that if you have curiosity to uh, apply your analysis to a non-software like mechanical engineering something, the, the first and foremost thing is you know, think about your safety because you may be driven by the power of curiosity, which is making you, you know, drive to put your analysis there. So remember this, that always, always think more about safety when you start troubleshooting. Because this, this is what I'm explaining here, uh, how to, you know, put the vehicle on that. So from the beginning. The vehicle, uh, first tab, since I knew that was a starter issue, I put the vehicle on a ramp. This is the ramp, what you see. And uh, I put ramp on both the sides. And I made sure that this is very important when you watch this video that you put a stopper behind and I have also put a jack stand there. If you see this, this is for safety, uh, the jack stand, whatever you see. And uh, this is going to make sure that you're totally safe. So you, your, your vehicle is on ramp, it's on a jack stand, and there's a stopper behind and then you are very So now let's see uh, how difficult it is, you know, to get the. So in my case, it was very difficult to reach the starter. The the issue started for me all all this time. It was very easy for me to troubleshoot the electrical circuit, but now the issue starts. See, you know, he's explaining how tough it is. Up inside here, these are the two starter bolts. This one as well as this one here. You take these two bolts out and you loosen up the starter. Now what is so? What exactly happened is that. When I saw these videos, I thought, okay, it's so easy to look at a starter. I started going inside uh, the vehicle and then I started looking at the starter, which I played the video now. See how tough it is to reach the starter motor. And then uh, uninstall the starter motor is a very big task. If you don't have proper tools, you just can't do because the play area there for any tool is very less. Uh, you need basically a 15 mm socket spanner, and uh, it should not be large, it should be small, and it should be able to you know, attach some pipe or something to that. Let's see what this person does. Then I'll show you. Said is to remove this drive shaft, which is just what I did. Taking the drive shaft, that is a little bit of a pain in the rear end because of where to... So my challenge was that I wanted to remove the starter motor without touching the drive shaft. So what you see is a front drive shaft here. And uh, I did not remove the drive shaft. I reached there. I did take help of another person, you know, then uh, 
if you remember the starter motor, he went inside and then uh, we got a box spanner, small box spanner, a 15 mm socket spanner, and then uh, we started drilling. But let me show you the location of the motor. How did I locate that so that, you know, before you start the job, remember this, that there are some parts which are very hard to reach. You can see with more near. So now I've gone inside uh, the vehicle and trying to show where the starter motor is. Picture of the motor, starter motor, which is mounted here. And uh, I was able to start my engine. Uh, let me make you hear the sound of the starting of So I did uh, the, I can't show you the location of the starter motor now. Uh, another important thing is that when, uh, when you uh, start locating the motor, you should uh, get all the tools. You should go inside the vehicle, get all the tools, and then we're going to start working on that. The first time when I tried try to do analysis, I was not even able to look at the stuff. Uh, when I started analyzing with the starter motor, a lot of people told me that you just remove the, the driver's side wheel. I think it's in the left side. And then you can see the starter motor clearly, right? This is what I saw from the driver motor, this is the image which is shown. I can expand this to show a better look. And then uh, this is the view you get when you open your left side wheel, whatever you have, when you open the cover of that, this is what you see the view, right? I thought initially this is the starter motor. And I started assuming I should remove this. Then later when I went down the vehicle, I was able to locate where the starter motor is. So I don't, I, ha I don't work in the mechanical field. I don't work on the uh, engines. I don't work on the, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in software. I don't touch all this stuff. Since I had, I had some background in this, I thought that I should attempt this. But now you see that the first, my first the positive point was that I started understanding that I'm concluding something wrong and I should look at the second motor. So that being said, and we will play a nice video of you know how uh, I look at the starter motor. So now I went inside, tried to look at the motor. You know, this is I'm going to get down on the vehicle and uh, trying to see. So trying Can to you see that you have the bracket for mounting motor? Can't see I'm somehow not able to take this correctly, but now if you see you will be able to see that it's a mounting of motor here. It's very far. And then somehow I cannot uh, take this further. But this shows pretty much, you know, that My the bracket is open of the motor. And you have two wires hanging there. Do you see that? So those are the two wires which would go inside the starter motor. One would go for the motor, one would go for the solenoid switch. Yeah, this is a photograph. 
Observe this. The reason which due to which the motor was not running at all. Yes. So I need to replace this with a new motor, but you know, find out what is the issue with the starter motor, which I'm explaining this video. So a lot of people may not understand what is inside an electrical motor. Those who have never gone there, they will not understand, but I'm going to explain uh, so that everybody can understand. Play this video first. One of the teeth is damaged here. So what you see here is something known as commutator. Why it is called as a commutator? because it helps in commutating the electrical energy from the brushes to the coil for the state. So this is damage, so you can say. Right? And that was the reason my starter motor was not working at all. So let's see in the flex this. This is the starter motor. This is for the Jeep Cherokee 2005. So I removed the starter motor and then I observed this. The reason which due to which the motor was not running at all. Yes. So I'm going to replace this with a new motor, but I think once your commutator is damaged, uh, you have to buy a new commutator and you know just press to this. So in the video, um, I am uh, explaining that uh, you should buy a new equator. Don't do all those things for now. You just order, order a starter motor online. You can get at Walmart or, you know, so many stores are there. Just Google for Jeep Cherokee 4.7 LV8 starter motor. Order it. It will come to you. Uh, the next video, I'm trying to explain how the starter motor you know uh, is connected to the gears and how does it move so let's see the next video also on this so let us see now I, I open the part of the motor stator motor which is explaining you what's going on there so you can see here this is the solenoid and then this is the gearbox it has three gears so the spindle of the armature goes here and then rotates all this th so what i mean is here that the stator has a spindle right the stator has a coil which is which, which we do winding at the stator and it is also a spindle. So the spindle, when you go here, there will be a gear, so you put inside that. Three gears. And uh, when it rotates these three gears, the behind gear starts moving, which helps you for cranking. Behind is the pinion, right? The pinion is touching the flywheel, which we saw first in the video when I was explaining about this. Uh, after doing all this, uh, you know, we assemble the state, uh, the starter motor back. But remember this, that it's very challenging to, again, place the new motor inside without dropping the shaft, uh, taking the motor back. And then you need the tools to, you know, uh, assemble the motor there. So make sure you have all the tools. You need... Uh, a ratchet, smaller ratchet. There's a, I think, 12 mm for the electrical connections. Make the electrical connections first when you're assembling the motor. And there are two electrical connections. One is a clip which goes inside, and uh, other one is the as a screw nut. So one connection goes to motor. Uh, Terminal and other connection goes to the, the solenoid. 
So the one which goes to Solan is a clip. You know, you just have to put the clip. But before doing all this, remember that you have to disconnect your battery. Very, very important. So I had disconnected my battery so that you, know, you otherwise you will get spark when you're working. So let us see now after assembling the motor what exactly happens, whether your, my vehicle will start or not. Hear the sound. Uh, so now I have assembled the motor, right? The started motor. Uh, sorry, not assembled. I mean, I have, I have installed this motor uh, in the place of the old motor, right? There are two mounting bolts. I put two mounting bolts. I finished the electrical connection. There are a lot of videos on how to do that. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't, uh, you know, show you all that because I have difficulties in taking the video of that when we are down. Let's play this video. Of the, the vehicle. Now let's try to start this after I replace the motor. And so what do I do now is that I put my key here. And then let's try. There you go. My vehicle is started now after replacing the starter motor. That's it. Have uh, a good time troubleshooting your vehicles when you have problems. I have kept my uh, details below. If you like, please do subscribe to my channel by pressing the subscribe channel below. Thank you. So this was a moment of happiness for me that all the analysis which we did, you know, uh, for the Jeep Cherokee uh, paid off, uh, the vehicle was starting. Thank you all for watching this video. If you like it, you press like button. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe. I will put some more videos. Uh, you you need to understand as engineers, right? Maybe as engineers, we are not just a, a software engineer. We have engineer mind, which can do analysis. In software, we do, you know, uh, a lot of uh, complex effects. You can use the same mind I'm telling you how to analyze the issues with your vehicles. Uh, this analytical mind with some background, some videos, but make sure that you put your own judgment when it comes to safety. You know, don't just believe videos. Make sure that you're safe when you're working on this. I would not advise, please take my word, that people who have zero knowledge in the mechanical engineering, right? Do not attend this. Don't, don't put on me, right? Make sure that whatever you do, you're safe on this. You worry first, uh, first about the safety and then you start worrying about your troubleshooting. Thank you for watching this video.